Uh, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Hanzala Salim, and uh, I'm here to present my PPT. Our group is Group B, and Rahil will be the doctor, Dr. Rahil, and the patient will be Ahmed Mojtaba. So let's start. So starting from the basic uh, anatomy of lung, uh, the human respiratory system consists of uh, nasal cavity, oral cavity is there, then pharynx is there, larynx is there, trachea is there, bronchi is there, and then ribs are also included. So the primary function of this system is to furnish oxygen for the individual tissue cells and to take away the waste product like carbon dioxide produced by those cells. So this is the whole uh, anatomy of uh, respiratory system as you can see in the picture. So basically we have two lungs. Uh, the lungs are two spongy organs uh, located in thorax. They consist of elastic tissue filled with an interla interlacing network of tubes and sacs that carry air and blood vessels that carry blood. Each lung is divided into lobes. The right lung is divided into three lobes. There are three main lobes in the right lung and there are two lobes in the left lung. The left, uh, the left uh, lung has an intendation uh, called cardiac depression or notch for placement of the heart. There is a notch on the left lung, uh, lung so that is a notch for the heart. So at the end of each bronchiole, uh, there are alveoli. The lungs consist of uh, about 300 million alveolar sac. Mm, these are basically the parts where the oxygen uh, is, uh, uh, there is a fusion of uh, oxygen into blood vessels. So first of all, we will start with our clinical examination as we are done with the anatomy. So we have to first of all inspect the chest, the shape of the chest, any scar is there, any prominent veins are there, uh, respiratory rate and the rhythm of the respiratory rate as well uh, the chest wall movement, is there any intercostal recession, if uh, we have to auscultate if there are any added sound in uh, the breathing and also the cyanosis uh, in the hands. And also for the sputum, we can uh, check the sputum color or different tests are there to uh, for sputum culture. So basically, we start with the general examination of patient. In general examination, we have to look at the patient uh, chest, the wall of the, the chest wall, if there is any deformity or not. So for in scol uh, scoliosis, uh, the, it looks like this, and there is pectus excavitum, uh, there is depression in the chest. And in pex pectus cranitum, there is a outward protrusion of the chest wall. And also in general examination, we have to look for any clubbing in the hand, any tobacco staining or per peripheral cyanosis is there or not. So I would like uh, Rahil Ahmed, Dr. Rahil Ahmed to inspect the patient and please. Assalamu alaikum. So my name is Dr. Rahil. So today I am examining you. Okay. Would you like to allow me to examine you? Yes, sir. So first of all, please tell me your name. Age. Age. Okay. Single or married? I'm single. Occupation? Student. Okay. So today I am examining your respiratory system. Would you like to know, uh, allow me? Okay, sir. Okay. First of all, uh, first of all, uh, I will check chest deformity, any scar or any previous surgery lesion. Uh, uh, forward your hand, please. Looking on the hand for clubbing, uh, tobacco staining, peripheral cyanosis, which are most commonly in lung, uh, lung malignancies and fibrosis. 
So the basic examination is done. The general examination, we will move toward our specific examination. That is, first of all, we have to check for the deviation of uh, trachea that is mostly seen in pneumothorax as well and lung collapse or uh, consolidation as well. And then we have some palpitation and also percussion if the percussion note is resonant or dull and as well auscultation if there is any added sound present in the breathing or not in the airway. Mostly the there are added sound like crepitation and wheezing is present in asthma and pneumonia. So tracheal position, first of all, we have to locate the tracheal position. Uh, trachea is most commonly deviated in mediastinal lymphoma, pleural, uh, pleural fibrosis, and also in pleural effusion, atelectasis, and also pulmonary fibrosis. So basically, this is the deviation of trachea. As we can see, it is uh, moved toward patient right side. Uh, and it is not in the center line, this mark. It is shifted toward right. So if the uh, deviation of trachea is towards uh, the lungs, that is in these cases, at uh, atelectasis, pleular fibrosis, also in uh, pneumonectomy uh, and aplasia, while it is moved away, away from the lung. <laughs> means if the right lung is having pneumothorax then the trachea will deviate to left side and in these cases if uh, uh, the problem is in the right lung then the uh, trachea will also deviate to toward that lung towards that lung so it moves away from the lungs in case of pneumothorax pleural effusion and also in tumor so rahil Ahmed, can you check for no. the deviation of trachea yeah yes, sir. Uh, so, sir, I like to touch your trachea. Give me a laugh. Move your neck uh, behind. Okay. So, I check trachea shift, uh, which is normal at uh, suprasternal nose to jack shift, but it is normal. Okay. So then we move toward palpitation. First of all, we have to check for the tenderness. If the chest wall is tender, if there is any muscle strain or intercostal tenderness is present or not. Then we have to check for the chest wall expansion. So this is how the chest wall expansion is uh, done. We have to place our both hand on the chest and ask the patient to breathe in and breathe out. So would you please like to show them? Okay. Can you breathe in? Now breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay. So next we have to check for the percussion. And we have to compare on the both side. These are the sum of the point where have, we have to check for the percussion. The percussion node is dull in case of uh, if the fluid is present in the lungs. Because of the solid mass, the percussion node gets dull. So first, these are some of the points uh, above the clavicle. But we have to check bilaterally because we have, uh, we have two lungs. And uh, the position should be away from the trachea, almost 30, uh, 3 centimeters away from the uh, trachea because it is in the lobe uh, the fluid is present in the lobe not in the tube so these are some of the percussion sounds it is resonant in a case of normal lung means it is loud clear and pitch in case of normal uh, lung because the lung is hollow there is air only inside the lung there is no solid mass present and it will be dull because the dullness will be present medium in intensity and pitch will be present there, but the dullness will be moderate as in case of consolidation, collapse, fibrosis or abscess because the fluid uh, present in the, those cases are not as much compared to the other cases. If it is stony dull, then it is a case of pleural effusion because in pleural effusion we have a lot of fluid in the pleural uh, area. 
and hyper resonant means it is very loud and the pitch is very low it is in case of pneumothorax <coughs> so rahil can you please show them how to percuss so sir i would like to percuss would you like to hold down okay. so as anjala said we can uh, percuss on bilateral so first of all we start from uh, left side clavicle first we can put uh, our uh, finger and then tap on our finger to percuss now on the other same side the note was dull on this area because there is a hard present and there is a solid mass because of that the note will be dull if there is some solid mass present then the note will be dull so then we have to check for tactical parameters it is a vocal parameters we have to ask the patient to repeat some numbers and auscultate those numbers for the vocal resonance and uh, so mostly there is decrease of parameters occur as a result of excessive amount of air in lungs if there is presence of too much of air if the lungs are hyper inflamed then uh, the parameters will be decreased uh, it is mostly uh, seen in cases a uh, case of pulmonary emphysema chronic uh, chronic uh, obstructive pulmonary diseases copd asthma as well and uh, severe airway uh, obstruction and the parameters will be high in case of if there is a fluid present inside the lung mostly in case of pneumothorax as we can see this so in case of lung consolidation air in healthy lung replaced with something else inflamed so the parameters will be high in case of consolidation and if the parameters is low then excessive air is there in the lung the thickness of the chest wall will also be increased this is the way how we have to assist assessment or the way to uh, do this process uh, so rahil can you show them how to do complete the vocal resonance with the stethoscope you can say 111 okay So here I can auscultate the um, so the lung sound is normal. If uh, I uh, I hear wheezing sound, it's a case of asthma. And a crepit if I hear crepitation sounds, if it is a case of pneumonia or pleural effusion, but in this uh, patient it's normal. So then we have to go for auscultation, the breath sound. if it is normal if it is absent if it is reduced so basically the added sound in uh, auscultation are wheezing wheezing is a shrill whistle coarse rattle you hear when your your airway is partially blocked if the airway is blocked then there will be a wheezing sound whistling sound inside the uh, lungs 
the, uh, you will uh, auscultate the lung when you will auscultate the lung there will be a shrill whistle means there will be a wheezing sound mostly it is seen in allergic uh, reactions bronchitis and it is the hallmark of asthma as well the wheezing sound it is most commonly seen in asthma and the crackles or crepitations are respiratory uh, respiratory sounds often heard in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease as well as in restrictive condition as well sometimes such as heart failure lung fibrosis and pneumonia it is mostly most commonly heard in pneumonia the crackles or crepitation uh, it, it feels like uh, some in the season of uh, spring when we hear the sound of uh, leaves on the floor and we when we put our feet on it and they crackles so that is this sound it's most commonly seen in pneumonia and there is a rub sound mostly seen in uh, pleural friction rub occurs when the two layer of tissue become inflamed or if they lose the lubrication between them mostly when when does the lubrication is uh, lost in which case do anyone know when the lubrication between the tissues or the wall, uh, layers of the lung the layers of the lungs is lost when there is no fluid between the pleural pleural fluid is lost these are the uh, grating sound of the pleural lining rubbing together there will be a rubbing sound <clears throat> so it is best described as the sound made by threading on fresh snow most commonly like uh, whenever we thread on fresh snow so the same th sound is made as it is seen in rub as well so pleural rubs are common in pneumonia pulmonary embolism and also pleurisy pneumonia also sometimes they are common but pneumonia most commonly we hear, hear crepitation and crackles this sound is uh, rare in pneumonia but it is mostly seen in pulmonary embol uh, embolism and pleurisy so these are some of the common condition <coughs> and these are the some uh, of the breath sounds like in consolidation the like it is a summary of the, what we have done before so in case of consolidation percussion note will be dull and breathing sound uh, the there will be bronchial breathing and the sound uh, added sound will be crackles or coarse crackles and vocal resonance will increase and in case of pleural effusion the percussion will again be dull because there is presence of fluid inside the lung so the percussion will be dull the note will be dull and breathing sound will also be uh, decrease rub whether it is present or not like uh, there will be a little rub present in this case pleural effusion and uh, vocal resonance it will decrease because again the fluid is present in this case the air was present mostly that's why vocal resonance was increased and in this case the fluid was the fluid is present in the inside the lung so vocal resonance will decrease in case of pneumothorax the percussion note will be hyper resonant because again fluid is present and breath sound they will decrease vocal resonance will also decrease in case of fibrosis percussion will be normal breath sound will be normal but we can hear crackles and pulmonary edema normal breath sound uh, percussion note and breath sound will also be normal at the added sounds are crackles and vocal resonance will decrease so Rahil Ahmed, can you auscultate the patient Thank you. and show them how to auscultate and listen to the different breath sound okay. Normal, normal. So here I can obscure the sound, but the sounds are normal. So then at the end we have to check for the as we have done with the per, uh, percussion palpitation all, uh, and also auscultation then we can go for the cervical lymph node 
to check whether there is any swelling of the lymph node or not. The most common cause of lymph node swelling in your neck, in your neck is always, I guess, in mostly 70% cases, it is upper respiratory tract infection. So the the, uh, the lymph node, those are enlarged that that are submental, submandibular, preauricular, and postauricular. These are some of the lymph nodes that are most commonly enlarged in case of upper respiratory tract infection. So, would you please check and show them how Don't to check, check the lymph node? Because lymph nodes are always <coughs> palpitated from behind for the patient. So, here first of all, we will check submental lymph nodes, then submandibular lymph nodes, preolicular lymph nodes, and post auricular lymph nodes. But there is no swelling, so patient is normal. So next we can go for the examination of legs. Ankle edema is always present in deep vein thrombosis. And also erythema nodosum is present. These are the some of the pictures you can see. There is swelling of this leg due to deep vein thrombosis. And this leg, it seems normal. While erythema nodosum, you can see this uh, scarring of the skin on the above surface. So, would you please check for his ankle edema? Always we have to compare bilaterally. We cannot yeah. say uh, while looking at one leg yeah. because uh, we have to put the, always uh, check it bilaterally. Here I didn't see any sign of edema. And that's the end. And now Rahil Ahmed would like to summarize his uh, patient, his experience. So please let so us know. So today my patient is Ahmed Mushtaba. He is 24 years old. Occupation, uh, by occupation he is a student. So today I uh, examined our respiratory examination. There I didn't uh, find any chest deformatory. I also I also did not find any deformation, uh, deviation of trachea and I also percussion the chest wall and uh, from front side and behind and there is do, uh, no deformatory on auscultation the lung sounds are normal and there is no sign of uh, inflammation of lymph nodes and ankle edema and deviant thrombosis. Thank you. Thank you.